Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, I talk about how the collective unconscious and unconscious manifestations and expectations from our society, from our history, from our family can keep us from being true to ourselves, from being the best version of yourself. However, during this video, the 16 personalities kept donating to me. Yeah, follow to learn more about the collective unconscious and listen to what the 16 personalities had to tell me. INTP donated $2. I know the video has not started yet, but I just wanted to tell you that you are wrong. You are so wrong. I don't have the energy to explain how but you are 100% wrong. What? It is not my job to educate I don't you. even... I guess, thank you for the donation? So, anyways... <laughs> We all share our common history and common ancestors, and that means we also share ideas. Ideas, myths, legends, archetypes that have been passed on to us from our history, from our family, from the people that came before us. These traditions exist all over the world. Yeah, everyone has and relates to these kind of stories like... They, they act like a kind of ancient wisdom that can help you make decisions about things that you have yet to experience firsthand. Because of this, we have more in common than we have differences. We all share these uh, archetypes, we all share this common history, these common ancestors, and that means we share similar experiences. That means we can relate to and understand each other, even if we personally can feel differently about something. No matter what personality type you are, you're going to find that there is common ground between you and every other person you meet. You can understand and see and hear other people and they can see and hear and understand you because we are able to access this ancient wisdom of the collective unconscious. However, there is a danger when it comes to the collective unconscious. Yeah, you can become trapped in it. You can become lost in your gender, your national identity, or your relationships. You can feel lost in the expectations that your family has for you. Your family might want things from you, might expect things from you that don't fit who you are or what you want to do. You can feel pressure to be a certain way because society has taught you to be this way. That means we have to learn to understand the collective unconscious. We have to understand the people that came before us. We have to understand our history. We have to understand our national heritage. But we have to be able to rise above it and learn to make our own conscious choices. By studying the collective unconscious, you can learn to break free and become your own person. INFJ donated $2. Man. You're obviously mistyped. I have spent 20 years developing my own system and you are totally a Hazutu YXX type. Um, okay, INFJ. Uh, thank you for sharing about your new system. Uh, I would love to hear more about it another time. Anyways, for now, I just want to say that we can understand these common ideas and legends as part of our collective unconscious. The collective unconscious is a hidden world that exists between all of us and this is the identity and experiences that we share with other people across the globe. ESTP donated $10. You smell bad. JK Lamau, you're a cool dude. Keep up the good work, loser. Uh, okay, uh, thank you ESTP. Guys, if you enjoy my channel just as much as this ESTP guy did, why don't you consider hitting the like and subscribe button? And I am on track to hit 10 million subscribers by the end of 2050. So if you want to be a part of that movement to hit 10 million subscribers, why don't you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Now, moving on. We come into contact with the, these kind of archetypes and the collective unconscious when we reflect on the experiences that we have had with other people. We can also experience the collective conscious firsthand by forming relationships with the world and the people around us. Yeah, when you talk to another person, a space opens up between the two of you based on your shared experiences and the areas that you connect with each other's on. And this allows you to really see and understand how other people think about you, what other people expect from you, how other people see you.
INFP donated $2. Hi, um, can I ask you something? Hi, INFP. Thank you for your donation. Of course, you can ask me anything you'd like. Now, the shared identity that we feel with other people can be intimate and deep as the relationship is between two lovers or it can be based on our shared blood, family or history. And it can be even something simple like uh, having the same gender or uh, coming from a similar place or town, you know. These kind of experiences, when you connect with other people on these levels, you're seeing and you're feeling like you, um, you're, you're made aware of how other people see you. You're made aware of how other people think about you. You experience expectations, needs, ideas that come from outside of yourself, from another person or from having been from this city or having had this gender or having uh, shared this kind of a history or bond. Two people can reflect on this, this bond and can experience this bond, but remember, you're always going to see and experience these things differently. Some of the things that you imagine that other people expect from you might not actually be there. And so if you can make these expectations known, if you can discuss with other people how they see and experience this bond, you can also become aware of how there are many different ways to experience this. For example, you might connect with another person based on having the same gender or coming from the same place. But if you discuss these experiences and what this means, you'll find that this person might look at these experiences very differently. The lessons that they drew from these things might be different than the lessons that you drew from it. And how they saw it and how they manifest these ideas can be different than how you manifest it. Just imagine, there are many different ways to be a woman or to be a man. And many different ways to experience this bond or this uh, relationship. Some people might struggle with these relationships and might hold antagonistic ideas about it. They might dislike their own nationality or might dislike where they're from or the people that come from there because they've had bad experiences with this in the past. Another person might have positive connotations to this, might think of this as something positive, something great, something amazing. And so you'll find that people can think about these things differently and the way you experience this is not the way it necessarily is. There are many ways to look at truth, many different perspectives. ESFP donated $20. Hey, so I went to a coffee store today and saw the cutest, fluffiest dog. He was so fluffy. I just wanted you to know that. P.S. Love your shirt. <laughs> sure, that sounds uh, fun. Uh, send it over to me. I I'd love to listen to it. <laughs> um, anyways, these ideas that exist regarding what it means to be a man or what it means to be an American are very powerful. Yeah, these ideas really shape us. People can say, I'm an American, and people will immediately have ideas about what this means. People can say they are men, and people will automatically make assumptions about you or what it means to be a man for you. And so uh, the collective unconscious can represent a powerful influence on your life because are you who you are because you made your own decisions or are you who you are because you've been following a script? Have you just been following the idea of manhood in your culture? Have you just been uh, raised according to American ideas and ideology? And have you lost the ability in this to think for yourself? What if the un collective unconscious bestows on you like these kind of expectations and ideas? What if you are simply blindly enacting a script. What if you are just a follower of the past or of the historical ideas about this culture or place? Are you able to think for yourself? Or are you being <laughs> manipulated by this great power, by this great unconscious influence? ENTP donated $50. Help, I am being held captive by PayPal and forced to process text donations. This is day 905 in their prison. They only feed me Cheetos. I am cold. Uh, I am so cold. Wow, uh, that sounds terrible, man. Um, I hope you're able to escape from these captors at PayPal. <laughs> so many live li their lives completely based on these ideas. There are people out there that define themselves as men and <laughs> 
think and that they act and do everything because they are men. They believe that everything they do is a result of being men or from being manly or from uh, being American. They think that they are uh, doing everything because of this collective idea. They consciously seek to be and live up to these ideas and expectations fully. There is people out there that have been taught from an early age to, that they need to be a certain people, that they need to go into a certain career, to become a doctor, to uh, become a lawyer, to become something, because all your people from your family in the past have chosen these careers and have come from these kind of traditions. And so, of course, you need to live up to that heritage and be that way. And so you need to listen to your parents. And you need to follow their shoes and follow their footsteps and go the same route that they did. You can see how these ideas can be powerful because we can use this as a collective unconscious wisdom. <laughs> the fact that your parents have had these experiences or have walked this journey before you is a direct factor to your success. It gives you this idea that you can, too, follow in these uh, people's footsteps. You, too, as an American, can succeed and make it and become a billionaire, just like Jeff Bezos. You, too, like a man, like the man before you, can become successful or powerful. People use the collective unconscious to tap into encouragement, confidence, power, and that is why it's so tempting. When you don't relate to or try to disagree with or ignore or break free from these conventions, you can feel powerless. You can feel that you lack the power to resist these ideas. Your family has such a strong influence on you, has such a strong push. Your history, your culture, your society has constantly been forcing you to fill these shoes. And whenever you try to go out of this script, people punish you for it. So, the collective unconscious can represent the power, it can represent the carrot, or it can represent the whip. It can push or pull or drag or move you in ways that you don't even realize. ISFJ donated $50. Eric, have you tried the keto diet? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not a fan of keto diets, but I do try to live healthy. I am mindful of what I eat, and I try to um, have a healthy diet, and that's something positive or important to me. Regardless, thank you for your suggestion. Um, so it can be very important to learn how to break free from these expectations. And one way to do it is to become mindful of it. A lot of people don't realize that they are following in this script. A lot of people think that they are making their own choices, but are they really? We drink Coca-Cola, but do we like it because it tastes nice? Or do we like it because advertising has told us it tastes good? How do we know if our choices are made because we like to do something? Or what if we are being manipulated? What if we are being used? Did you know that there are people out there right now, companies, politicians, that rely on your test results, your 16 personalities results, to give you personalized advertising? Yeah, people have found that if you are neurotic, and if they send you negative imagery, pessimistic words, if they can show you uh, things that uh, will spark fear or anger or anxiety in you, they can shape your actions and beliefs. People will use your personality against you. They are tracking your behavior online. And based on the people that you follow, they make ideas, assumptions about you and who you are. And they use this to give you catered advertising, personalized imagery, things that will subtly move and pull and push you in directions you didn't even realize. Yeah, how often do you change your wardrobe? And do you think that your clothes still look nice? Chances are there's trends out there that are telling you what is trendy and what's not. And after a year, the colors that you chose, the things that you wore, are out of the trance. You don't see it anywhere around you anymore. It's not in any of the images or advertising that you see online. So, you start feeling like your clothes don't look nice. You start feeling like you don't like them anymore. What caused this change? Was it just that your taste changed? Or was it that society had changed you? <laughs> These are the kind of questions that we need to ask ourselves. And... This is why we need to start becoming mindful of the influence around us and how our information and data is being used. Truth is, these things can manipulate us and cause us to make decisions that will lead to 
a decrease in happiness. We can feel less good about ourselves. We can feel that our clothes are ugly. We can feel like we are overweight or not good enough. We can feel like we are um, somehow weaker, lesser people than others. We can feel less successful, not because we are, but because advertising has told us we are. Another thing is the media. The media can tell us that the world is going to hell and everything is going terribly and there is crime everywhere and everything is going wrong. But is that really the case? Or is the world getting better? How do we know? <laughs> Perhaps the media has made us feel and assume certain things about the world that aren't true. And that is the danger. That is what we need to be... That is the danger. That is what we need to be really, really careful about. INFP donated two dollars. Are you sure you won't mind if I ask you a personal question? No, INFP, I won't mind. Please just ask me your question. It's okay. Anyways, to break free from the collective unconscious means to expose yourself to existential anxiety. If you've been living your whole life making choices based on other people or based on what society has been telling you, making your own choices is going to be really scary. It's going to be feeling really really difficult and you're just gonna feel like oh i wish somebody would tell me what to do you're gonna feel like oh it was such so much better if i just didn't when i wasn't aware of this when i didn't think about this the anxiety is and can be crippling it can be paralyzing it can be dreadful to experience these things for the first time to realize that you're not making your own choices you're your own person and you have to jump into the unknown Suddenly, it feels like you have no idea where you're going. Suddenly, you feel confused. Suddenly, you feel lost. But don't be afraid. By through that emotion, you can endure this anxiety. You can endure this fear. And you're going to find that once you start jumping into the unknown, and once you expose yourself to this hidden magical world, you're going to be learning things about yourself. You're going to become gradually more and more self-secure. And you're going to find that you have a new kind of security, a security that isn't based on what anybody else thinks about you. You're going to find that you're less worried about what other people think about you. You're going to feel like you're a stronger person in yourself, just the way you are. And that is what we all seek. That is what we all must strive for. And that is honestly all about forming your own myth, your own legend, your own personal self. Yeah. You want to understand the 16 personalities, you want to understand your personality, you want to learn about yourself, you want to start asking yourself questions about what you really value, what you really want, and you want to break free from the stereotypes. Perhaps you're not the first type you got, perhaps, perhaps you were stuck in a role, perhaps you were lost trying to be somebody else for somebody else than yourself. And when you start really learning and going out into the world, making your own choices, making decisions for yourself, you're going to learn who you really are and you're going to become more secure. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel more tapped into yourself. You're going to feel stronger. And it's this kind of strength, this kind of inner security that allows you to become a hero. Your own legend, your own myth is waiting for you. You can achieve what nobody else has achieved before. You can find a path that is your very own. You can become the 17 personality type, your very own personality type, your very own person, your very own human being by understanding and relating to and connecting with yourself. ESTJ donated $2. Hey man, your channel sucks. I wrote a book called 10 Steps to Make It on YouTube. If you pay me 1000 US dollars, I can give you a 10 day boot camp and transform your channel. Uh, hi. Thank you for the donation. Um, I'm not gonna pay you 1000 US dollars. Uh, I don't appreciate your tone. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for your donation. The way I see it, you can use the 16 personalities to better understand your personality type and your potential. By learning to connect with the collective unconscious, by learning about different legends, successful people from around the world, people that have made it before you, people that have been able to go their own way, people, uh, famous people, successful people from across the world that have made it, you can learn what potential that is inside of you because what they have, you have too. You have the potential as well. That's all in you. 
And honestly, it's not about copying these people, but it's about understanding and drawing from their lessons and learning from their experiences and knowing that you have, just like they do, your own unique path, your own unique possibility, your own unique quest waiting for you. ISFP donated $10. Eric, repeat after me. I am beautiful just the way I am. I am beautiful just the way I am. I am beautiful just the way I am. Thank you for your kind affirmation, ISFP. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone can learn to see their own inner beauty. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, really, you could say the goal is to become your very own 17th personality type, to learn your own path and your own unique way of being. You don't even have to stop um, having a national identity if you don't want to. If you find comfort in having these things, you can keep them. If you enjoy and feel like it means something to you to be a man or to be a woman, or if you feel like these things matter to you, that's all good. The only thing you want to know is you want to be mindful of it. You want to feel like you are a man because you are yourself. You don't want to feel like you're uh, yourself because you are a man. You don't want to give up your identity or personality to fit in anywhere. You just want to use the experiences, the ideas that exist around this as your own kind of strength by knowing that uh, there are other people in the world that have had these experiences, people that come from different spaces. By knowing that there are communities around you, people around you, that you have family, that you have people around you that can support you. By knowing that there are people around you that will try to help you in your quest or what it is you want. Know that there is a power in the collective unconscious and know how to pull from this power without letting it control you. Use the ideas and inspiration that come from these images. Uh, and use it to your advantage. ESFJ donated $5. I noticed your shirt is wrinkly and your beard needs a trim. I have the perfect skin cream to make your skin glow. You are still cute. <laughs> uh, thanks, ESFJ. Mm. Anyways, your goal is to never let yourself be controlled by your community and shared conscious experiences or ideas. You will never be just your national identity or just... A man or just a woman you're always gonna be more than that you're gonna have so many different communities around you to pull from uh, people that share your ideas or share your thoughts from all over the world different communities and you can learn to use these communities as your own springboard to jump when you want to go where you need to to be who you need to whenever you want ENTJ donated five hundred dollars I am a billionaire I made this account so I could brag about how rich I am. That's great. Uh, I'm glad you made it and that you've become successful. Uh, thank you for your donation, Ian TJ. Regardless, many think that they can simply pretend not to see these things. I know a lot of people that say, oh, if you don't think about these things, it doesn't exist. If you pretend like you don't have a gender or pretend like you don't have a national heritage or uh, pretend like these things don't exist, you're gonna escape from this kind of unconscious control. But let me warn you, it's not that easy. Through this, what tends to be the case is we have patterns that we follow and we often don't understand why. You've found that you keep seeking out a certain kind of partner, a partner that you know isn't good for you, somebody that isn't going to make you happy. You know that you keep following in the same footsteps or making the same mistakes in your career or in your goals or ambitions. You don't know why. And that's because you don't reflect on these things. You don't listen to and see other people that have made these choices and have been there before you. And you don't understand or learn from the lessons of these experiences. By avoiding to relate to or think about these things, you subject yourself to these kinds of influence. You become even more sensitive to these things. And these things exist. These are ideas. They are powerful ideas. And they exist regardless of if you acknowledge them or not. ENFJ donated $10. Eric, I want you to believe in yourself. You have the potential to succeed and to make it. More people should watch your videos. You have an important message and I hope other people will hear it. Thank you, ENFJ. I really appreciate that. So, my last words are these. 
Do not be afraid of the collective unconscious, but be aware and be mindful of it. Un know and understand the different communities and cultures and myths and legends that came before you. Understand and be mindful of the expectations that people have of you. Discuss and talk about and reflect on these things together with other people. Become more self-aware and help other people become more aware of these things as well. Note this, how advertisement and social influence is affecting you. Notice how people around you are influencing you. And find ways to use this influence in a positive way. Use these things as information and information alone. Yeah, perhaps Apple really is the best choice. And perhaps the advertisements are telling us this. But perhaps they're not. So just make sure that you stay informed and understand why these things are happening and why people are telling you these things. Anyways, thank you all for your donations and thank you for watching this video.